What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Hopefully all of you guys are being safe, you're being healthy, you're washing your hands and not being gross. So we've got a few things planned today. We've been doing a pretty good job of avoiding people, staying home, not doing a whole lot. Today we gotta go out for a little bit, just a little bit. I did do a little uh, social distancing in the Ford. You can see, uh, you know, got her a little bit muddy. And you're probably saying, Rhino, that's not a whole lot of mud. Well, see, you guys always wonder why I keep so many half drank bottles of water in my truck. Well, they come in real handy when you accidentally drive through a mud puddle because you're trying to take some pictures on a dirt road of your truck for Instagram. And then you gotta splash a bunch of water on there so the mud doesn't dry. So I don't know if you guys picked that up, but that was Dave that called me, who we're going to meet up with right now. We're going back over to that project where we were craning in all of the big uh, trellis beams. And if you guys remember, we got some lumber dropped off at the warehouse for that project as well, so it's all gonna kinda tie in today. But then we've got a uh, big delivery here from Uline that needs to go in my truck. I was gonna do it right now, but we're probably coming back for that. And probably most importantly to all of you guys and why you clicked on this video is sitting right there in that box. Well, we've also got more Uline stuff right there. And uh, don't worry, don't worry, we're all stocked up for quarantine. We're good to go right there. But yes, this will also be uh, going to the warehouse and we're gonna be opening this and talking about why this is so important. But of course, as you guys know, work comes first. Let's hop in the old OBS and uh, head over and meet up with Dave. Now, the good news with all this going on is, uh, well, nobody's blocking the diesel pump today. Still gotta be safe though. Man, the scale of this house that never ceases to amaze me. I know it's hard to see up at the top of the hill there, but this thing is just absolutely massive. Let's go see if we can find our good buddy, Dave. Dave? Dave? Rhino? Dave, it's Rhino. <laughs> Dave. Dave, I think there's more stuff coming out of your mask. Dave, it's Rhino, no Jeez, way. Dave. Good to see oh, you, buddy. Dog, hey, what, what model you got there? You. Huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, man, you want to open this gate for you? Yeah, dude, that'd be fun. There's yeah, a lot of vans up there, though, Dave. We got some competition. Yeah? All right, let's check it out. So, you know, while we wait for Dave to get off the phone sitting in his van here, everybody always complains that I complain about getting dings and dents on my cars and my trucks, whatever. There's two types of people in this world. There's people that actually care about their vehicle, and then there's people like Dave's wife, who every time she gets home and opens the door, hits the side of his van with her car. Every single day, you can see it all down the side of his van. Don't be that type of person. For all three, how about you two? You said four. Yeah, here. Well, David, I'm uh, glad to see it hasn't fallen over since we left. <laughs> Looks good, everything's nice and painted. And I gotta say, say what you want about California. You can't beat the weather or this view. All right, buddy, I'll get this one. Great work. How about, how about about right there? That was great work. Thanks, buddy. Man, I, I don't know if I could have done it any better. Dave, when are you going to give your son his shirt back? <laughs> well, it's like I said, man, we were, uh, I went upstairs to change, but then the shower was taken. So you can't change without the shower? Wife was sleeping, shower's taken. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but here's the good news. Let's go, all right, we got good news. This shirt used to fit. Let's go, buddy. Shoot, Dave, we could have done 10 at a time. We made it, buddy. All right, man. Oh, hold on, hold on, oh, oh. There we go. All right. all right, well, you guys can see, we're basically matching what's up there already. It's gonna be facing both sides of all the steel that's on the trellis. Mm -hmm. All right, lumber's all protected. We're ready to go. Oh, you gotta work for that, that's how. We ain't ending the video yet, Dave. I mean, we're saying bye to you, but we're not ending the video yet. Really, dude? The last time you were here, you like went and bought a truck. You know, there's like two people that were like, hey, Dave, oh, it's a truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, Dave. This video, you know, all your fans are gonna come out. <clears throat> Both of them? Yep. And through the power of YouTube, we are back. We've got everything loaded up in the old OBS. This thing's becoming a work truck again, guys. I don't know how I feel about this, but let's head on over to the warehouse. Now, some of you may be saying, Rhino, you just like drug that big old pallet all the way across your brand new bed liner. You're gonna scratch it. Actually, probably none of you guys are saying that. But don't worry, I did my best to mitigate scratches. There is in fact a nice skateboard underneath here to be able to roll this thing and not scratch the bed liner. There's probably a lot more of you out there that are saying, Rhino, it's a bed liner. Who cares? Scratch it. And listen, if you want your wife to slam her car door into your van every time she comes home, then you know, that's one way to live. I prefer to not let mine do that. And now for the fun part, let's get all this unloaded. Starting to feel like Today all we're doing is unloading stuff. So 
So we, we, we got Wes that just showed up. We gotta give a big thank you to SD underscore Yeti underscore 6.2 for uh, making sure Wes doesn't clog my drain anymore. He said we, we gotta upgrade our hand cleaner a little bit. So what, what do we got in the box here? So from uh, Eagle Grit hand wipes, hand cleaner, whatever, he sent us a uh, gallon of their right. mechanic hand cleaner along with the Oh, we got handy, the whole dispenser and everything? Handy dispenser. Dude, that's a heavy duty dispenser. Look yeah, at that. So. Nice. I'm sure we'll get this mounted up here real soon. <laughs> get on it, bro. No solvents, no pumice. Detergent-based formula with soft scrubbers that are easy on your hands and drain-friendly. Hey! What's Our original up? formula removes virtually all substances, kills odor, and moisturizes without irritation. Well, thanks, buddy. We appreciate that. No more clogged drains. Saving us on plumber's fees and keeping Wes's hands clean. So I just totally got sidetracked from setting up that pallet rack and opening that train horn for you guys. Uh, I ended up just knocking all the workboard orders out for today. I'm trying to get better at like just getting things done earlier, especially now that we're not having the employees come in to do the boxing up until this whole like uh, Rona thing's over. And I figure, you know, if I'm gonna be doing it, let's just knock it out before we just like jump into the YouTube side of things for the day. But anyways, we've got all of our pallet rack pieces in. Now the reason I wanted a pallet rack in here, and honestly, I probably should get like a couple more of them and bigger and longer and whatever, um, is I'm sick of staring at my tire tower that has taken up a lot of ground space as well as like there's a lot of vehicle parts around here that can be you know elevated and at least give us space underneath to store more stuff we're trying to get organized around here so fun fact for any of you guys that order anything from uline and you realize uline shipping is ridiculously expensive if you go the ups route you can always opt for pretty much any order to send it motor freight which is basically a semi truck that sends it on a pallet so all those boxes you saw which was that top pallet on my truck earlier that would have cost me 90 dollars to ship from UPS. It was $50 to have it motor freighted. It ended up being $54 by throwing an extra pallet on with all this pallet rack to ship it. So $54 shipping. Got all this shipped next day motor freight. Now let's see if we can set this up without dropping it on ourselves here. Probably gonna be moving tires about 20 times right now. <laughs> oh, I'm so over moving tires. Yeah, the wheel and tire collection is getting a little ridiculous. If anybody wants the stock Tahoe wheels, which are these right here, under 500 miles on them. Tires are in beautiful condition. Shoot me an email, dmaxrhino at hotmail.com. There's a link in the description. I want these things gone. Let's make a deal, local only. Don't want to ship them. in the butt but hey we got it done yes obviously I'm gonna be cutting plywood to fit into here but you know I'm trying to avoid the Home Depot because of the Rona and all that so there's my uh, temporary plywood for now which I think we all know if I actually like stack tires way up there it's probably gonna become permanent I also don't feel like stacking these tires alone I think uh, yeah I'll save that embarrassment for another day now honestly one of the things that I have been holding off for on the BBB for the longest time I had one on my last truck is a train horn setup. And notice I said train horn because there's one big giant pet peeve. I mean, I have like 5 million pet peeves, but this is one big one that I have in the air horn market is train horn. And we're gonna get to that in a second. Obviously on the Denali here, I've got the full air setup already. We've got the dual tanks plus the dual extreme air compressors, which you see up underneath there. Really, that's like the bulk of what it takes to power an air horn setup. And all I've really been missing this entire time is the train horn. And a lot of you guys have asked why I haven't put one on the truck yet. And really, there's a couple reasons. One being, I used to get all of my horns from realtrainhorns.net. And in case you can't really tell, I'm a train horn connoisseur. Uh, I only bought them from realtrainhorns.net. But something happened with the guy that runs that and he kind of went MIA for a little bit, then would text me, then wouldn't text me back. So as much as I wanted to get them, I just couldn't get them through him. And basically what he would do is he would buy horns from the railroad, tear them apart, refurbish them, powder coat them to whatever color you want, and then send them out. Now, if you're looking at this box down here, you're obviously uh, seeing horn blasters on the side right there. And don't worry, it does cause cancer in California. I'm not sure if it causes a Rona or not, but maybe. And you're probably saying, Rhino, with all the issues you guys were having with all the horn blasters kits you've been installing, why did you end up going with horn blasters? And that is a very good question. I actually looked at horn blasters way before we started like actually installing horn blasters kits here. And they do offer the horn that is in here. Let's just open the box actually. Let's see what kind of goodness we got in here. We've got a solenoid valve, some airline, a whole lot of nuts and bolts. That, that makes me a little nervous. Oh, don't tell me. 
really. Apparently, horn blasters doesn't send them assembled like every other company I've ever bought horns from. All right. Did you hear that? Not plastic. One horn. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't want to break it. You can kind of see the scale of horns now. This is the Nathan K5LA. I'm going to assemble it here in a second because it makes a lot more sense when it's assembled. But one thing you'll notice a big difference on, and this is like real train horns versus plastic air horns, is number one, they're not plastic. So these are actually cast metal horns, which obviously a real locomotive is going to use metal horns, something that'll hold up in the weather versus cheap plastic Chinese horns. So the way this setup works is this piece right here is your manifold. So this basically has one input right there and then five outputs. So K5LA, that means there's five trumpets or five horns. They have a K6LLA, which is actually a bigger version. It's a different tone. To me, the K5LA is my favorite tone. I know Keith uh, at Mr. Senkal on Instagram, he's running the K6LLA, I believe, which is like the biggest, biggest setup you can get. But to me, this is a, a more used tone in like the locomotive industry. So you've got your three air outputs on top and then two on the sides, basically each one of these horns, I believe the small ones go on the outside like that. They've got little rubber O-rings inside the bag there to seal everything. All right, so here we have it. This here is the Nathan K5LA all assembled like it should have been shipped. Honestly, assembly wasn't horrible. But now let's get into why I ended up actually ordering this from Horn Blasters, why I didn't previously order it from Horn Blasters. So this setup right here um, from Horn Blasters is like $1,900 to $2,000 just in the horns that you see right here. That is not including the solenoid valve, which is the electronic air dump valve in here. This big old booger does not include that. And it does not include, there's another uh, mount that goes with this that hasn't shipped yet. So $2,000 is just the horn setup you see right here, which to me, that is overpriced for these horns. To me, these horns should be like 1,200, 1,400, somewhere in that range. I see like different times of the year, they'd be in price a little bit different, but I just refused to pay more than what these things should end up costing. But then you got to think about it. I mean, Horn Blasters will sell you a set of plastic, you know, Chinese horns for like three or 400 bucks not including all the other stuff, just the horn kit. So the reason I ended up buying these from Horn Blasters was thanks to, I guess, the crazy Rona going on in the world right now. They actually offered a 25% off sale the other day. I don't know if they're still gonna do it or if they're gonna do another one, but that enabled me to essentially get this thing for about 1400 bucks, which is to me a reasonable price for the horn setup that we have here. So that's the reason I pulled the trigger. So I ended up getting the horn setup plus the solenoid valve plus the extra mount. I don't really know what the extra mount is or does. I think it goes on here and allows you to run the airlines through it. I don't remember if I had that on my last truck or not. So I got all of that for essentially what this horn would cost by itself. I wish we had one of the Horn Blasters XL shocker kits or whatever that uh, we had recently installed on Big Lou's truck or Martin's truck to show you guys just the sheer difference in like, we're talking massive size difference. I mean, look at that. Look at the biggest trumpet on there. Look how big that is. I mean, you could fit my whole hand down in there. These things are just on an absolute another level and it drives me nuts, nuts when people call plastic air horn kits, train horns, because they're not train horns. Now I will give Horn Blasters credit. If you go through their website, they do call like their XL shocker kit a train horn. But then if you scroll to where like the Nathans are on their website, you'll see it says authentic train horn. Then Horn Blasters actually does offer a metal cast version horn that they sell. It's like their version, I'm assuming. They just took molds off the Nathans or something very similar to that and started casting their own. And again, they won't call those authentic, which is good because really like locomotive companies are using Nathan horns. So to be authentic, I feel like you should be ones that real locomotive companies are using. So Horn Blasters does offer basically this version in their own cast for I think it's like 1200 bucks or something as opposed to the normal price of 18 to 1900 bucks for that horn. So while I'm stoked to finally get a real train horn set up on the BBB, let me show you a little dilemma we're working with. Keep in mind the size of that giant thing back there and we need to now fit that up underneath here. Whereas on my last truck, we put it right where the spare tire was and then my tank was back here, similar to all the installs we've been doing here at the warehouse. Obviously, this one's a little different. This one's a little more showy, the way that we have the tanks powder coated and displayed. And then we've got the compressors in the middle. So we're going to have to do some finagling. I've been talking with Zach. We might be moving these two tanks over to the outside right here and just basically cutting off that uh, leaf spring bracket that we don't need anymore. We're going to have to do some figuring and finagling to see if we can fit everything up under here. I mean, I know we can. I know people have fit way more. I am genuinely curious to see just what kind of room we're working with here. Yeah. 
these things are massive. Now the good thing is, you can get really close to your exhaust with one of these horns, and being that they're not plastic, you don't gotta worry about them melting. And I will say one of my biggest regrets of the Silverado that I was in, that I got hit by a drunk driver, rolled the truck, totaled the truck, was never going up underneath and unbolting my Nathan horn, because the insurance didn't give me any money for it. Um, the only reason I didn't was the truck being that uh, the person that hit me killed the passenger in his vehicle. It, my truck was always in police impounds. So they really only gave me like one shot to go get all of my stuff out of it. And we had to go through the lock gates into the police impound. There was a cop standing right there like just waiting for me to take all my belongings out. I don't think he wanted to stand around all day while I'm unbolting crap off the truck. And really I didn't want anything other than my horn because I was in love with that thing. And the powder coat job coming from realtrainhorns.net was much better than whatever. I think these are just painted to be honest with you, just cast painted. So I do miss the finish on my other horns. It was a little bit nicer, but considering I do like to keep my horns black and not ever do them like a fancy standout color, I think we'll survive with just keeping them like this. Cause number one, I don't want to pull apart the entire back portions, pull all the crap out of them to be able to powder coat them. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm kind of, Zach had actually mentioned it yesterday. I'm kind of contemplating putting this setup on the OBS. Reason being, I don't really drive the BBB that much. The one great thing about giant horns like this is people get out of your way or when they're doing something stupid, like you really can put them in check. And well, when do you see that the most? When you're driving the vehicle, you drive the most, which is probably the OBS. A little out of my budget to buy two of these. So maybe it's probably just gonna end up going on the BBB. Which speaking of, how mad do you guys think Carlos is gonna be? He's gonna watch this video. He doesn't know ahead of time that I got that. The one thing he would always try and have on me when we went to truck shows, even though he pretty much copied the rest of my entire truck, was he actually had a real, he calls it a train horn and his plastic horns are cute, but they're no train horn. Um, and so he would always hit his horn and be like, where's yours, where's yours? So, sorry, Carlos. Good thing Carlos wants to sell his truck and get in the car game. I think he's done with the truck game. So if anybody wants to buy Carlos's truck, it's about as close as you're gonna get to buying my truck. Hit him up at SoCal Dura MX. I think it's not Dura Max, SoCal Dura MX on uh, Instagram. One thing to keep in mind if you guys are going to be stepping up to getting a Nathan train horn set up is, uh, at least with the K5LA, I believe it's with some of the other models, there's a low mount and a high mount. Currently right now, we have the low mount, which that's the lowest profile height wise mount that there is. It keeps everything basically below the manifold. The high mount, I think these two bells themselves are mounted up top right here. So it makes it like more of a square package, which to me, uh, when you're mounting it on a vehicle, it means it's gonna hang down lower. And I don't like to see things like this underneath the vehicle. Like I like them to tuck up as far as I can. Obviously these things are absolutely massive. So you're gonna end up seeing a little bit of them hanging down, but I don't want the thing to like be dragging on the ground or you know, clip a speed bump or something like that when we're mall crawling. Now you don't necessarily need to go with the Nathan K5LA. Like I said earlier, there's a K6LA, there's a K6LLA, which is the longer trumpet. There's the P3, the P5, there's a K3. Basically the numbers obviously correlate to the amount of trumpets or horns that are in it. The best way to really pick which ones you want, go online. There's tons and tons of YouTube videos of people doing uh, different demonstrations with all the different horn setups. There's people that are, there's literally like a whole subculture of people that are like train horn fanatics, uh, to which I respect because you know, we gotta keep the tradition of the real train horn alive. Do some research, figure out a sound that you like. Again, to me, the K5LA is my favorite sound. And hopefully once all this like quarantining, social distancing and all that wears off, we can get that thing installed and you guys can you know hear for yourselves and decide if that is a sound that you like. Now, don't think I'm just bashing on plastic horns for being crappy. Uh, for what they are, albeit I think they're a little more expensive than they should be, they, they're loud. And Carlos's truck, uh, Big Lou's truck, Martin's truck, those horns are sufficiently loud to do whatever you really wanna do. But I'm a stickler for details and I'm kinda OCD about like things being authentic and real. So that's the main reason I probably spend more money than I should on uh, horn setups. And with that guys, we're gonna wrap up this video. I don't even wanna keep walking by this tire pile that I know I'm gonna have to eventually move here soon. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like like you get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.